Hello, welcome. By learning, unlearning and relearning together in the next 15 minutes, you will be able to clear your conceptual knowledge of cell, which will give you a solid platform to excel in your exams. Today, we will learn together about cell. You will get to know definition of cell, cell theory, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells and finally plant cell and animal cell. To begin with, let us start with the most basic definition of cell. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. It was Robert Hooke in the year 1665 who first examined cox cells through a lens. Can you guess what he observed? He observed honeycomb like structures or uh, box like structures which he then referred to as cells. The cell is responsible for all life processes and therefore it is rightly known as the building block of life. The human body has trillions of cells. Just think how systematically they are organized to carry on with the life activities. Next, we come to cell theory which was proposed by Schleiden and Schwann in the year 1839. They stated that all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. The cell is the basic unit of life. Rudolf Fierko added a new dimension to the cell theory. All new cells arise from pre-existing cells, which means spontaneous generation cannot be the method for self-organization. Cells can originate only after the division of pre-existing cells. Let's relearn the cell theory. 1. All living organisms are composed of one or more cells. The cell is the basic unit of life. And finally, all new cells arise from pre-existing cells. Next, we will classify organisms based on the number of cells into unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. I'm sure you know the meaning of uni and multi. Uni means one, that is organisms which are made up of only one cell are known as unicellular organisms. Example, amoeba, paramecium. Multi means many, that is organisms which are made up of many cells are known as multicellular organism. Example, human flowering plants. Now, what do you observe in the section of an onion peel in the diagram shown? Yes, there are number of cells which are arranged in a particular manner. Each cell has a prominent nucleus, cytoplasm, cell membrane and cell wall. The unicellular organisms, since they are composed of only one cell, that single cell has to perform all body activities. We say there is no division of labor. What are the different activities of the body? Yes, they are respiration, excretion, digestion and so on. The multicellular organisms, they have large number of cells which are differentiated into tissues, organs, etc. and are capable of doing specialized functions. Cell body in unicellular organism is directly exposed to environment on all sides due to which 
exchange of gases easily takes place by diffusion. Can you name any two gases that are exchanged? Fine. The gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide. This is not the case with multicellular organisms because only the outermost cells are exposed to the environment. The cells require some other mechanism for functioning. Therefore, they have different organs specialized for different functions. What is the main organ for excretion in human? Kidney, right? And organ for respiration? Lungs. In unicellular organisms, it is the single cell that is involved in the production of new organisms during reproduction. Whereas, in multicellular organisms, the germ cells or the reproductive cells take part in reproduction. The somatic cells or vegetative cells do not take part in reproduction. When there is an injury, say on the skin, the somatic cells divide and multiply to form new cells. In unicellular organisms, with the death of the cell, the individual dies and the lifespan is short. In the case of multicellular organisms, they have a long lifespan. With the death or damage of a cell, repair and formation of new cells take place and in this way they keep on multiplying. I'm sure the difference between unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms is crystal clear to you now. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this lecture, please like and share the video so that we can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. In next few videos, you will learn about cell wall, plasma membrane and also about various organelles. Now, let's continue with the topic. Classification of cell can also be done based on the nucleus into prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Can you guess the meaning of the term? Prokaryotic. Pro means primitive. Karyon means nucleus. The nuclear region is not well defined and it is called nucleoid. It is clearly labeled in the diagram of prokaryotic cell. On the other hand, if you look at the diagram of eukaryotic cell, you will find a well defined nucleus. Try naming the parts of the nucleus. They are nuclear membrane, nucleolus, nucleoplasm and chromatin material which later form the chromosomes. Have you ever thought why does the physical appearance of a child often have resemblance with that of his or her parents? It is due to the chromosomes. Chromosomes contain information for inheritance of characters from parents to next generation in the form of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. You'll notice in the figure that nucleolus is absent in prokaryotes. It is very prominent in eukaryotes. Helps in the synthesis of rRNA. Ribonucleic acid is the full form of RNA. Another structure that is prominent in prokaryotic cell is the mesosomes, which are the extension of the cell membrane. It increases the surface area in photosynthetic prokaryotes 
helps in DNA replication and carries enzymes for respiration. Let's go ahead to our next slide where we shall look into the differences between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. We have already discussed about the nucleoid. The nuclear region is not well defined in the case of prokaryotes. It is well defined in the case of eukaryotes and it is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. We have also learnt that the nucleolus is absent in prokaryotic cell but present in eukaryotic cells. The prokaryotic cells have only one chromosome whereas eukaryotic cells have more than one chromosome. We have learnt about the mesosomes doing various functions like increasing the surface area for photosynthesis helps in DNA replication and also carries enzymes for respiration. It is absent in the case of eukaryotes. Cytoplasm lacks membrane bound organelles in the case of prokaryotes. It is present in eukaryotes. Membrane bound organelles like mitochondria is required for respiration then we have other structures like Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, etc. Then another difference is regarding the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It is circular in the case of prokaryotic cell and it is linear in the case of eukaryotic cell. But this DNA in the case of prokaryotic cell is present only in the cytoplasm. But in eukaryotic cell it is also present in mitochondria and chloroplast. These two organelles have their own DNA and ribosome. So they are able to make some of their own proteins and are rightly known as semi-autonomous organelles. So mitochondria and chloroplast are semi-autonomous organelles. Cell membrane bears respiratory enzymes in the case of prokaryotic cell. In eukaryotic cell respiratory enzymes are not present in the cell membrane. Next we come to the type of cell division. It is binary fission in the case of prokaryotes. That is, the cell divides into two daughter cells by simple division, which is known as binary fission. In eukaryotes, there are two types of cell division, namely mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis, a type of cell division that results in two daughter cells having the same number and kind of chromosomes as the parent nucleus. Therefore, it is known as equational division. Meiosis, it is a process where a single cell divides twice to produce four cells containing half the original amount of genetic material and therefore it is known as reduction division. So mitosis is known as equational division and meiosis is known as reductional division. Let's pause for a moment to revise and relearn the concept that we have learned so far about prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. First, we learnt about the nucleoid, nuclear region, then we learnt about nucleolus, then about chromosomes, then mesosomes, then about the type of DNA, where it is present, what are mitochondria and chloroplast otherwise known as? 
then regarding the respiratory enzymes present in the prokaryotes and finally regarding their cell division. And example of prokaryotic cell is bacteria and cyanobacteria and example of eukaryotic cell, human and flowering plants. Let us study plant cell in detail with the help of diagram. Now looking at the figure, try to find out some unique features of the plant cell. Cell wall, plastids or chloroplast, vacuole, nucleus. The outermost covering of the plant cell is the cell wall which is made up of cellulose giving strength and rigidity to the cell. The plastid or chloroplast is present in plant cell which helps them to prepare their food by a process known as photosynthesis. For photosynthesis they require carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. Carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast. So it is marked in the figure. Next comes the vacuole. You can see a large vacuole in the center of the cell. The vacuole membrane is called tonoplast. The vacuole contains cell sap filled with amino acids, sugar, water, etc. The nucleus in this case is pushed to one side because of the presence of the large sized vacuole. Other organelles which are marked in the figure are mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, ribosome, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So you have seen the structures, cell wall, plastid, vacuole, nucleus. Fine. Next let's study animal cell in detail with the help of diagram. Now looking at the figure, try to find out some unique features of animal cell. You'll find that the cell wall is absent. Cell membrane or plasma membrane is the outermost covering. Plastids absent as animals cannot prepare their food with the help of sunlight. Nucleus is in the center. Vacuole is generally absent and if present they are very small in size and many in number. Centrosome Notice the centrosome, it is just above the nucleus. It helps in the formation of spindle fiber during cell division. Other structures, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum are all marked in the diagram. Another structure which you can see are the lysosomes. These are organelles which have enzymes that help in digesting damaged cells or worn out tissues. Let's go ahead to our next slide where we shall look into the differences between plant cell and animal cell. So we found that the outer covering in plant cell is a cell wall followed by plasma membrane. In animal cell the cell wall was absent and we found the outermost covering to be that of plasma membrane. For preparing the food plant cells require plastids. Plastids absent in animal cell. A single large vacuole is present in the center Vacuoles generally absent. If present, they are very small in size and many in number. Due to the large vacuole in the plant cell, 
the nucleus is pushed towards the periphery. Nucleus occupies the center of the cell in the case of animal cell. Centrosome is absent. Once again I repeat, centrosome is absent in plant cell. But the formation of spindle fiber is done by microtubules during cell division in the case of plant cell. Centrosome is present in animal cell. As I have told you, it helps in the formation of spindle fibers during cell division. I am sure the differences between plant cell and animal cell is clear to you. Finally, I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comment section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.